Hola and welcome to a new episode of the Roofless Dog and Pony Show. My name is Julio Panicello. I am the dream alchemist at Roofless Painters, an art school and gallery for creative nomads. In each episode, we feature the theme of our next painting collection so you can learn what we will be painting next and why. Uh, we discuss the origin of the concept's theme and uh, its contemporary context and we explore different possibilities for visual representation on our work using paintings throughout art history uh, as inspiration, we cite uh, stylistic and historical references. Uh, in many ways, uh, our episodes are like our paintings, messy, unpredictable, and unvarnished. All episodes can be found as video on Instagram and on our YouTube channel, and as podcasts on any podcast platform. So you can listen uh, to the episodes while you drive or walk or you want to fall asleep or you want to tune out from this crazy world. So um, yes, now uh, everything is um, recorded and uh, presented as podcast as well. So um, also you're invited to contact us with any questions or comments about this episode and um, also you're invited um, to contribute your notes and comments to uh, this presentation as well. So this is the introduction and it's just perfect because um, it just gives us some time uh, for everyone to join. So that's why we have a little script and we just go over it. So we'll try to keep this under 30 minutes. Uh, we have some um, wonderful paintings and images and a little bit of history about the next uh, painting collection. And um, so, um, we have been talking about a botanical subject recently that came up because our lovely um, happiness hero, Jen, um, uh, did a visit to the Getty Museum. And uh, one of the things that she uh, discovered is that in the garden at the Getty, the six uh, bougainvillea um, plants or bushes uh, or shrubs are blooming right now and they are spectacular. So we saw images that she took and we were just talking about bougainvilleas and our memories about bougainvilleas and it's bougainvillea season and if you haven't noticed uh, they are so beautiful right now more than uh, any other uh, year I believe. So we're going to paint bougainvilleas. That's it. We're just going to show you some examples of paintings, uh, mostly contemporary paintings um, in which bougainvilleas are the main subject. Uh, we did a little bit of research about the history of bougainvilleas and these plants, these shrubs are native of um, South America, essentially. Um, and they were taken from South America and then spread all over the world. So it's a very interesting story, just really briefly. Oh, by the way, yeah, the range of colors, which will be very interesting, uh, from pink to magenta to purple to red to orange and also uh, white. And we haven't seen a lot of yellows, uh, yellow bougainvilleas, but there are also yellow varieties. And uh, essentially what we're gonna ask you is either just go outside and take a photo of a bougainvillea and uh, use it as an image reference or also if you want to just take uh, some of the flowers and do a little bit of an arrangement uh, we'll show you some examples of paintings uh, with uh, that are essentially a still life uh, with flowers so uh, we'll also compile images of bougainvilleas um, around the world as well but um, very interestingly, we have like something really special here in Southern California, specifically in um, LA County. We have the oldest and largest bougainvillea in the entire nation. We just discovered it's in Glendora and it's called Glendora bougainvillea. And let me just kind of like share uh, the image. I believe I have it. I don't have it. Of course, I don't have it. Um, 
anyhow so uh here's a postcard of a typical image of a bougainvillea wrapped around a palm tree and this postcard um is from the beginning of the 20th century we found an article um the writer has a collection of postcards about bougainvilleas uh and we haven't um seen well we're gonna we're gonna keep our eyes open we haven't seen a um a lot of this uh combination of bougainvillea and palm tree but i just wanted to mention that our um there's another uh, example of um, vintage postcard of a bougainvillea in LA. Um, and guess what? Our lovely P. Flam Museum postcards from LA Museum has uh, the same postcard. So we got like a little bit of uh, history right here. And it's all, it's written and sent and it's dated. Um, it doesn't have the year. How about that? Um, but yeah, so um, we also wanted to uh, bring up this uh, image of uh, this person. She was um, a very famous um, horticulturalist, I believe that's the name. Uh, her name was Kate Sessions. Uh, she was credited for creating the uh, Balboa Park in San Diego. And um, she was the most devoted apostle um, for the incorporation of bougainvilleas in Southern California. Um, she is credited for incorporating jacaranda trees, um, bougainvilleas, and uh, the bird of paradise, which is now the official city flower of Los Angeles. So um, Kate Sessions, very important to point out this history of this person who not only was a woman, but um, um, some people say she was uh, a lesbian as well. So let's just bring some queer history during June <laughs> and how she is the reason why we have this amazing spectacle of purple rain uh, with the jacaranda trees and also um, the bougainvilleas blooming at the same time. Bougainvilleas bloom during now June and July, but also winter time. But the biggest blooms are just right now. And there was an intent at the time to turn uh, this uh, barren, brown, arid land into a paradise. So um, one of the ways to turn it around or turn it into a paradise was to bring tropical uh, flowers or flowers from different countries uh, that they were not, they were, they were not native. And um, they would um, survive and thrive in a dry climate. And certainly enough, uh, bougainvilleas are one of those uh, flowers. So uh, bougainvilleas actually bloom more the less water they receive. So we are thinking that perhaps uh, since we haven't had rain pretty much uh, at all during this past winter or wet season or whatever, that was um, maybe that's why um, the blooming of bougainvilleas uh, this summer is so spectacular we invite you to go out to drive around and to try to spot uh, bougainvilleas around us because they are everywhere so um, let me just also bring another image of uh, something that i wanted to oh yeah so something else that we um, uh, learn about bougainvilleas so uh, it's the fact that, um, let me see if I can just find uh, the actual article. Uh, the first European, so the name Bougainvillea, it's a French name. And um, it's the one of the last names of a French uh, Navy Admiral, uh, Louis-Antoine de Bougainville. And um, so he... Um, went on a journey around the world um, with a ship called Etoile. Um, and in the ship, there was um, a couple of botanists, uh, Philbert Commerson and his wife. At the time, um, women were not, it was illegal for women to uh, board on sh and this kind of ships, I guess, to go around the world or kind of like journey. So she had to disguise herself as a man in order to be able to just join the uh, journey and uh, discover uh, the flower. Um, we don't know much about the 
actual details of the journey, but we know that um, even though Comersan uh, was given credit at the beginning uh, of being the botanist that actually uh, discovered the flower, I believe it was in Brazil, and then uh, they were able to take samples of the flower. But uh, recently, in fact, um, it was uh, uh, discovered because of journals and um, documented um, stuff, I guess, writings, that it was his wife. Um, his wife's name, name was Jean uh, Barre. Uh, Jean Barre uh, was actually the one who discovered the flower, and they just gave the name of the admiral that was in command of the ship or the uh, expedition, I guess. So it has a... A very and, and by the way, the spelling, um, it's the same in Spanish and in English and in French and uh, I think pretty much all over the world. So this plant, after it was sort of like this quote, quote unquote discovered by these Europeans, um, it essentially spread throughout all the um, colonies because it was first... Um, uh, grown in France and the UK and their respective imperial um, uh, uh, land or whatever, uh, or colonies, um, uh, essentially they spread the, the plant all over the world. So it has a colonial past. Bougainvillea is a French name and it was established in uh, around 1789. Um, so we were interested in finding out the name of this uh, flower uh, before it was named after the French admiral. Uh, we haven't seen or discovered a lot of uh, names uh, before Spanish names, um, but we did uh, find out like the different names this flower is named after or named or called in um, Latin American countries because it's not called Bougainvillea uh, there. Uh, it's called uh, Flor de Papel, um, it's called um, uh, Papelillo uh, in Peruvian, uh, Veranera, it's called Tres Marias, sometimes it's called Santa Rita, Roseiro, uh, Rosetta, Riso, uh, Pantaguinha, but we love uh, Flor de Papel, um, paper flower, just because the flower of the Bougainvillea is very thin and it has this... Um, texture, a uh, very papery texture, uh, very, um, yeah, a tissue paper almost. Uh, if you have touched the uh, flower of a bougainvillea, you'll immediately understand and appreciate these um, other names instead of like the French last name, bougainvillea, uh, flor de papel, which I think it's so beautiful. Um, so, I'm just going to also mention, I think that's it based uh, essentially on the um, history of the Bougainvillea. Also, uh, yeah, the time it was planted in Glendora, Glendora Bougainvillea, which is a historical landmark, by the way. Uh, and I don't have images of that, but um, yeah, it's a single uh, bush and it expands like 600 feet, something insane. And we're thinking that maybe we should just go paint there. Uh, but these are some exam examples of uh, paintings um, of uh, bougainvilleas by different contemporary artists, mostly. Uh, we couldn't find the name of this uh, artist. Well, yeah, the name, yes. Oh, no, just the title, Bougainvillea and the name, Bougainvillea by Rosemary Ladd. So the name and the title, but we couldn't find the year. Um, of course, it's a very um, realistic um, and highly figurative uh, uh, painting. So style-wise, it's, it's nothing that we would, would, we would sort of like stand behind, I guess, because I feel like um, it's very important to show your own style when you translate something around you. But we curated or chose this image because of an example or being an, a good example of um, how to approach this subject. Because this is not just about painting a bougainvillea uh, with a building. There's something about the ar ar architectural elements that are involved um, in thinking of a bougainvillea. But if you feel like there's something that feels very intimidating or it's something that, you know, there's a, a heavy texture, perhaps something challenging to capture that um, uh, minute detail on the flower, you could also uh, find examples or even just clip um, 
uh, flowers of the bougainvillea and just bring it home and then set up your own still life. So it could be the entire plant, it could be a section of the plant, it could be the plant with the architectural element attached to it, um, but it also could be just the flower brought in um, and just placed in front of you or in a little vase uh, or something like that. So that's why we, we brought uh, this image. Uh, this is an example of an interesting composition of a bougainvillea. Uh, this is by contemporary painter uh, Marta Gomez de la Serna. Uh, she's Spanish, uh, born in 1953. This painting's title is Bougainvillea and it was painted in 2019. And we like the um, minimalism of the composition uh, in the sense that it, it combines uh, the botanical subject, the Bougainvillea, but at the same time, the architecture is um, treated in a very simple way. There's no uh, distinction or addition of sky or ground or windows or anything that feels very stere stereotypical of a bougainvillea image with an old door or um, stone uh, floor, I guess. Um, so it could be an interesting way of um, just um, uh, seeing or combining or uh, taking a photo of just one section of the bougainvillea. And um, we're going to move on to the next uh, image. Um, so this painting uh, right here, it's by Katie Whipple, uh, American, born in 1991. Uh, it's titled Bougainvillea, and it was also painted in 2019. And this is also um, an interesting approach to the subject. Again, um, the, the images that uh, we have about Bougainvillea plants are mostly associated with either memories of seeing them, uh, associated with summer, um, but they're usually attached or, 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 or the, the subject, is, it always comes with uh, architecture. Uh, it doesn't have to be this way. You could also take pictures of bougainvillea petals on the floor because uh, there's something really interesting about the carpeting of the flowers when they fall, the petals. Uh, on the floor as well. Not as much as the jacarandas, but certainly uh, um, we have seen, especially in areas where there's no traffic, uh, the petals of the uh, bougainvillea flowers just uh, carpeting the ground. Uh, th this is interesting in the sense that um, what it feels like, it's bougainvillea flowers floating on water and also some of them sinking at the bottom of what it seems like a pool. So again, a very modern, interesting composition in which you don't have any um, compartmentalization of uh, the composition, meaning there's no edge, there's no cantilever, there's no side of the pool or wall or sky or other plant or stem or trunk or anything like that. And there's uh, a zoomed in, uh, representation or visual um, area that feels very pictorial. Uh, bougainvillea flowers floating on flower uh, on water and some of them being at the bottom of a pool. Uh, I think this is possibly one of our favorite uh, paintings of the whole collection because it's a composition, it's very original. Uh, so this is another example that we like. Um, so Genevieve Zilberman uh, she is from France, uh, born in 1927. Um, this uh, painting is titled The Vougainvillea, and it was painted in 1995. Um, so we brought this image uh, of a painting just because uh, um, stylistically, this is an interesting and very an inspirational way of depicting uh, bougainvillea, which we associate with heavy uh, texture and difficulty to capture the flowers and the structure in a very uh, broad um, uh, way, capturing the essence with just a few brushstrokes. It, it's hard to actually recognize the architectural structure of this um, building. So anytime that um, there is this uh, uh, um, a little bit of a tease of this being a building, perhaps we don't know where the bougainvillea is growing, if it's 
on the front of the wall or behind the wall. There's an idea of a landscape on the left side, uh, but not really fully developed. And then some um, sky uh, on the upper part with a fence. So there are a lot of elements. It doesn't feel extremely busy because some of the bougainvillea, the, the classic, uh, extremely commercial bougainvillea uh, paintings have a lot of stuff. You know, they, there's, everything feels very pointillistic. And then there's the typical door and there's a, uh, an old person sitting on a chair. And uh, I don't know, it just feels like it's too much. We always talk about focal points. We talk about it's not a good idea uh, from a purist point of view to exceed more than three focal points and if you do it's always a good idea to sort of like group them together so this is an example of how to address a, a very complex focal point because it um, it um, depicts a lot of texture and sometimes we get confused about what is a focal point and what is texture and we feel like it's the same thing but it's not necessarily the same thing so this could be a good example of a subject matter in, in which uh, we could um, uh, disassociate those two elements. All right, let me just come moving forward. Um, oops, let me see. Okay, so yeah, um, this is another example, um, also a very, uh, almost like semi-abstract. Um, Christine Lafuente, 1968, she was born in 1968, uh, Bougainvillea on the Terrace. It was painted in 2020, last year. Uh, this is a classic um, composition, but treated in a very uh, contemporary way because, uh, again, uh, the, the emphasis or the interest, it's not in developing texture on the flower, but just capturing the essence uh, by just um, uh, studying the color of the bougainvillea and then arranging a composition that it's interesting in the sense that you have a little bit of the idea of light on the background. There are a lot of diagonals. Um, so it gives you a sense of perspective, uh, but it's not overly or it's not overdone. Um, so uh, the brushstrokes are big um, and there's no interest in maintaining a clean edge between elements, which we love. So another good example stylistically of how this could look like um, on our paintings. And this is the purpose of curating a selection of images of paintings. Uh, for the purposes of getting us inspired because it's important to see variations of style um, with the same subject and understand that uh, we don't have to fit the bill uh, or fit a, a single category. A bougainvillea painting or a painting of a bougainvillea doesn't have to be like that painting that we all have in our minds, you know. Um, no, so that's hopefully this is helpful in that sense. Uh, this is another example related to the very first image that we showed uh, in the sense that it's a still life um, involving a bougainvillea. So Terry Delap bougainvillea painted in 2016 um, and it's painted with acrylic. And again, uh, what we love about this is the, um, the fact that the bougainvillea uh, occupies a very small uh, space in the entire format. And the artist decided to give a lot of uh, uh, space on the upper part of the painting. There's an intention here. The idea is not to just uh, center the bougainvillea and make sure that it's uh, the only thing featured. The space here, it's a focal point as well just because of this large area, this uh, negative space becoming so predominant that it actually um, shares the stage with a jar. It looks like a mason jar painted in a very um, simplified way. Um, and then a bougainvillea as well, um, it, 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 a single, it looks like a branch, just a few flowers with a little bit of the leaf. So um, yeah, a good example as well, stylistically. Uh, this is a painting uh, by Denise, 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 a Turkish artist, um, titled, the painting's titled Bougainvillea, um, and we don't have the year. Um, so th there's a little bit more of a stylistic liberty here on this uh, uh, Bougainvillea painting. Um, so uh, compositionally, it, it almost feels like a bird's eye view of sorts because there's no distinction of ground or um, 
different visual planes uh, in the background, uh, depicting a, a contextual uh, space. But uh, the interest is to just um, uh, uh, capture the form and uh, the gradations of value on the flowers. Um, so we thought this could be also an interesting approach stylistically to depicting bougainvilleas in which uh, the space is not um, the main focus, but it's just the shapes, the curling um, of the flowers and also the variations of value, as we said. So, yeah, a different example uh, stylistically. Um, we are just going to move to a very... Um, interesting uh, painting. So because we showed the slide uh, earlier about blue and magenta, uh, this uh, painting <laughs> is by a Catalan artist. His name was Juan Hernández Pijuan. And this was really interesting um, because he was one of my painting teachers in art school. And I didn't know that he passed away in 2005. But um, I just love the um, synchronicity, I guess. It just brought memories uh, when he uh, essentially gave us um, talks and stuff like that. Um, yeah, he was considered more of a formalist painter. Um, so abstraction and pretty much in the line of uh, Antoni Tapies, which had a, a gr major influence in a lot of Catalan painters, uh, but he had a different uh, sensibility for color and texture. So um, this painting is titled Estudi per Bugambilla, uh, 1982. And it feels very abstract, but because of the title um, and because of the painting that we showed earlier, I feel um, it has the same um, uh, point of view of petals of bougainvilleas on water, on a pool, uh, floating on the water, which it sort of like uh, becomes a very, um, uh, a very, how should I say, a very interesting scene in certain um, uh, villas or uh, uh, rustic homes uh, in the Mediterranean. Bougainvillea is being part of patios or um, indoor spaces um, where there is a pool uh, um, and then um, the proximity of the Bougainvillea to a pool just causes this shock of uh, contrasting colors, the blue of the pool with the magenta of the bougainvillea. So I just completely empathize with the visual impact of that high contrast uh, that it's literally impossible to capture uh, on a painting. But I, I just appreciate the fact that uh, we uh, got those two paintings. And it just made me think of my uh, days in uh, art school. And I just remember uh, this art teacher he smoked a lot. He wasn't really nice, <laughs> but uh, it's so nice that um, I found this painting. So I don't know. Uh, anyhow, so I think finally, I think that's it. Well, how uh, amazing that we just finished. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. So this is a, a quite an interesting painting. Uh, Bougainvilleas and Jacaranda, Bougainvillea and Jacaranda Avenue by Keith Henderson, which uh, who was um, uh, an artist from the UK, 1883-1982. So, um, yeah, early 20th century. And it's just so wonderful because it combines the two uh, botanical subjects that are currently blooming uh, everywhere and we have them here in LA and we never thought of them uh, as uh, being friends. <laughs> we've done uh, paintings of jacaranda trees. We've never tackled bougainvillea but we just selected this image because of the combination of the jacaranda tree and the bougainvillea uh, combined and blooming and um, yeah so stylistically it's representational and uh, we like the composition but um, it's mostly conceptually that uh, that's the reason why we are enamored 
um, with this uh, painting. And I think I have another uh, couple of paintings. Um, yeah, this is a painting also by a UK, an artist from the UK, uh, Francis Ferdinand Maurice Cook. And the title of the painting, oh, he lived between 1907 and 1978. The title of the painting, uh, Bougainvillea Bush and Trees, Eastern Road, Nassau. Um, so this seems also uh, like a painting done from life. We love the looseness, the underdeveloped brushstroke. We love the simplicity, uh, the capture of the essence rather than, than uh, focusing or obsessing too much on um, getting things alike. So there's something really fresh and vibrant and dynamic and we can certainly recognize that this this was pop, most likely painted from live, and also it's a very interesting uh, bougainvillea color, um, this purple uh, essentially. So um, anyhow, so and finally, this same painter has another image of a bougainvillea, and this one it's a little bit closer to the idea that we all have of a bougainvillea painting, uh, more classic, and um, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, a, a more classic uh, painting. Uh, it's titled Bougainvillea on the Costa del Sol. It's uh, in Spain. Uh, Francis Ferdinand Maurice Cook, again, 1907, 1978. And this feels more like the traditional idea of texture. We think Bougainvillea and we think immediately texture because the flowers are all over the plant, essentially, or pretty much populate the entire plant. So, um, yeah, um, another stylistic example, a little bit zooming out, so you get more of the idea of the plant and the movement and the cascading direction of the flowers and also the different layers with other botanical elements nearby. Um, so hopefully this gave you a range of styles. Um, and again, the painting subject uh, this week is uh, bougainvilleas because we are in the midst of bougainvillea season. They bloom uh, June and July mostly. And because we didn't have that much rain, at least in Southern California, uh, uh, we think um, that uh, that's why the blooming this year, it's exploding. It's so interesting because there hasn't been a super bloom of poppies this year because of the drought. But then some of the plants that tr thrive with uh, harsh conditions uh, like the bougainvillea it's just exploding so uh, please join us um, uh, go on a bougainvillea hunt please get in your car go walk and drive around and just like a mad uh, bougainvillea uh, person uh, just uh, snap some shots of bougainvilleas uh, get some flowers bring them home uh, set up your still life and make sure you have uh, different images so you can then decide which one you want to use as a reference for your painting. Uh, there, We haven't found a lot of examples of Bougainvillea paintings, so this will be interesting to have a collection of paintings. Um, so we're very excited about that. It's a very underrated plant. Um, just because it's uh, ubiquitous, we just don't give enough uh, credit to how much beauty and and passion. Oh, and by the way, um, let me see if I have the poem. There's a brief poem, yeah, um, by 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 Lucy Eddy. Uh, garlands of royal purple, proud regal notes of pageantry, sounding imperial color, a fanfare of trumpets, triumphant, barbaric, bells and chimes and cymbals clanging crimson. It's just so beautiful. It's kind of like uh, uh, describes uh, this passion um, uh, and this intense color and this barbaric uh, uh, beauty almost. So let's paint bougainvilleas. Um, please um, like this, oops, sorry, please like this post, uh, this presentation. We hope you uh, liked it. Um, thanks uh, everyone who joined um, and 
thanks to those of you who are still hanging out here. Um, so yeah, the webinar is remote, so you can join from anywhere in the world and you can also join uh, regardless of your experience with painting or not. It doesn't really matter at all. We provide a lot of um, tips and advice. Everyone's doing a different painting. So it's not that we are just, just doing one image reference and everyone does the same thing. We're not doing that. So some people like to listen uh, to the presentation because we also bring up some historical elements, other references that we discover along the way. Uh, we want to talk more about the um, uh, Horto culturalists responsible for, what was her name again? Uh, Kate, uh, I forgot. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to find out uh, right now. And uh, yeah, Kate Sessions. Yeah, Kate Sessions, um, the person responsible for all the bougainvilleas, all the jacarandas and all the birds of paradise, uh, which is uh, the official flower of Los Angeles. And we had no idea about that. So see you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.